Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about when you should be naming layers and why you need to do it. For those of you who are new to Figma, I'm quickly going to explain what uh, layers are. So for instance, if we're inside our Figma page, we have a layers panel on the left hand side. Now if I create any type of object, so for example, let's create a frame, that creates a layer row inside the layer panel. Now I'm going to create a, a rectangle and that's going to create another layer above this frame. So the actual order of these layers determines what's on top and what's below. So for instance, if I drag this across here, you can see that the rectangle is above the frame. But if I move that layer, for example, below the frame layer, now it's below. Um, so now we're going to talk about uh, why it is important to name those layers and when should you be naming them to save yourself some time as a designer. Usually uh, I would name layers only when I'm working on high fidelity designs, like for example if I'm working on a design system or a component library that's being used by um, a lot of other designers, that's when I would start naming layers. Um, but if I'm working on like throwaway prototypes or uh, concept iterative prototypes and designs, I wouldn't really bother naming too many layers unless I have to. All right, now let's look at some of the reasons why naming layers is so important. Uh, the first example I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to look at it from a perspective of a developer or someone who is not a designer looking at your designs and trying to get some CSS out of it. So for instance, I've got this design here. There's, there's an overlay um, with a uh, modal up at the top. And let's say I'm a developer inside an inspect screen and I want to know the color of this transfer button. But because there's an overlay above, I can't really click on it and I can't select it. I can't even check what use the eyedropper to check um, what color that is. So one way to select that button would be to right click in that vicinity and go to select layers. And from over here, you can actually select the button from, from this dropdown. Now imagine if I didn't name that button, I would have had these kind of, uh, as you can see, it's got frame three overlay, it's got frame four transfers. It's, it's using all of the uh, default naming conventions. But for this particular instance, I renamed that one to button and I can clearly select it from here. And now I've got the CSS, I've got the color for it. I've got all of the CSS properties. So it's much easier for developers to navigate your uh, handover documents if you're using Figma only. So this is one of the important ways um, you could utilize naming conventions for um, your designs, especially when working high fidelity um, designs. And All right, let's look at another example. Let's say we're working on a component library. I've created a, a small one in the past and we've got a bunch of icons. We've got a buttons that utilize these icons within and we want to use these uh, components inside of our design. Let's say we've got a uh, our home button um, in our design and we want to change the icon to uh, home. So I'm going to go into this component and I'm going to select home. But as you can see, the color uh, does not stay the same, it is reverted to its original default color within this component library. That is because each of these shapes have a different layer name. As you can see, I've selected all of these uh, shapes and in the layer panel, you can see this one's called vector, this one's called vector two and so on. So what that means is that Figma doesn't actually know uh, what property to apply to the changed icon. So for example, if the initial icon is white, and then you change it to another icon, Figma says, okay, we're going to retain our white color, but I need to find the same layer name that I'm changing it to. If your layer names aren't the same, then Figma doesn't know what to apply the white color to, and it just throws it away and applies the default color. So what we need to do is make sure that we retain the same layer name of the shapes that have the properties for the color that we want to change to. So for instance, we can see that we've selected all of these particular vectors, and they're the ones that have that fill property. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them the same name. So I'm going to do a bulk rename. Let's call it icon shape. So all of these icons are going to have that same layer name. So as you can see, icon shape on each one of those. So now let's um, reset this component to its original state. Let's call this home. And now if we select this component and um, change it to home, you can see the white color remains the same. 
And the last example I want to show you is uh, to do with Smart Animate. If you're wondering why your Smart Animations are not working, I'm about to explain why. So for instance, let's say we've got two frames and we want this circle to move over here on a 3.3 uh, seconds transition. So I'm going to create a quick prototype. Let's um, create a point from this one to here. We'll do it on click. Instead of instant, we're going to click Smart Animate. So essentially what's going to happen, we want this to animate here. If we click play right now, it's not going to work. I click on that, that just does not animate. It instantly transitions over to the other frame. Why is that? That is because the name of this circle is ellipses one. This one is ellipses two. Now, if we rename both of them to have that same name, let's call it circle. And now let's play that again. As you can see, it is now animating. Now, there are many more um, examples of where Figma would use the layer names uh, for its functionality. Um, so for instance, there's some plugins that rely on proper naming conventions for layers for them to work. Um, so when, wherever possible, um, please name your layers. Uh, if it's a throwaway prototype or a throwaway design, you don't really need to because you're trying to iterate really quickly over those and um, trying to rapidly get some uh, user feedback, then it might be a waste of time to do it there. But if you are working on a component library or design system or handover doc documents uh, for the developers, um, it is actually useful to name layers uh, accordingly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thank you.